Hello, I'm excited to share this video with you. It's a um, montage uh, documentation of all of the creative choices that I've made from start to finish with the piece you see behind me. Uh, this is a fromage, which I will explain throughout the video, um, which is um, created at the request of my aunt and uncle. I will go into more detail about um, the way that they made requests that influenced the creative direction of the piece itself. And um, I just wanted to thank you for taking a moment to share the satisfaction with me of having gotten to a place of fruition on a project that has been a year and a half in the making. I hope you enjoy. I wanted to take a moment to draw your attention to the inclusion of lace and embroidery pieces. These are something that I choose to include in all of my work in um, homage to the legacy of female craftsmanship and the way that these items have been created throughout history by women but are not necessarily always honored in a fine art atmosphere as I believe they should be. Um, and additionally, to draw your attention to this, which is a piece of lithography that I produced from my days at UNLV. Um, all of the buttons that are included in the piece have come from the other side of my family, my grandma Shirley, who knew Grandma Maxine. And It's important uh, to comment on some of the choices that were made. Um, the kimono itself is from World War II era Japan, and I have stitched the kimono into the form that it now occupies so that, that it can be stretched fully along the canvas. You'll see the stretching process in the video as it unfolds. This piece of embroidery is a quotation from Aunt Sue, um, who learned to speak Japanese quite fluently and surprised her mother at three years old. You'll see a photo of Sue with her mother included in the video itself. These lovely little um, figurines are um, some of the family heirlooms. And so without any further ado, I will leave you to enjoy the creative process of this piece itself from start to finish.
And so um, just to talk a little bit about the process, um, this style of painting is um, referred to traditionally as fimage, which is sort of like collage, except that um, it's created from items that have a traditional female origin. And that term was coined by um, Miriam Shapiro and the other women who were responsible for the woman house art movement in the um, 60s and 70s. Um, I've been a proponent of that form of art and worked in that style of art for all of my career. So um, if you have followed my, my journey, um, then you're more than familiar with this way of working. Um, all of the flowers in this painting have significance for the clients who ordered the piece. So one of the things you might not be aware of is just as we have um, birth stones associated with the month that we're born in, we have birth flowers. And for um, the case of this painting, each of the flowers is significant of the um, month that the client and his wife, my uncle and aunt, um, each of the flowers is significant of them and of their um, children and their grandkids. And um, I guess what you're basically looking at is a reinterpretation of the concept of family tree. Um, with my aunt, her, um, the majority of her career, she focused on botany and um, she's had a lifelong love of all types of plants and um, it would be fair to say that it's a mutual passion. So for um, this process to be able to allow me the creative space to focus on one of my favorite muses, the flowers, and to um, bring awareness to their family and their family tree through the symbology of the flowers has been such a, a celebration of, uh, for the family and just a celebration of love.
I um, am so close to being finished with this thing and I uh, cannot help but be a perfectionist and there is a very large part of me that knows that my perfectionism is what has helped me define myself as an artist in um, this day and age. Um, oil paint is such um, an old medium and it's amazing to me that I, I cannot find um, a limit where I feel like I have arrived as far as the artwork or my own growth as an artist goes. Um, and this piece is a really good example. Um, I think that the folks who commissioned the order would have been thrilled with it 20 hours ago. <laughs> but here I am still working on it still fine-tuning obsessive little details that most likely won't be apparent to anyone but me and it does make me wonder as I'm you know working the wee hours and um, obsessing over this piece whether that is a characteristic that is like defining of what it means to be passionate or whether I am my own worst enemy at this point. But regardless, I am so close to being finished with this piece. Um, and I have been wanting to be authentic in sharing the way that I communicate about it. And so as I am counting down the brush strokes and fine tuning the little things and obeying the muse and kicking my own ass. <laughs> um, I just ask that if you have ever been here as a creator, that you extend love and light in my direction because I am trying my best to create something worth history. Hello, hello, my friends. This is getting close to being finished. And as I'm wrapping it up and finishing the last little bit of the painting, um, I'm switching gears to attach some um, fabric pieces to the painting itself. And this is the um, element of the work that 
earns that lovely label that I like to use, Fimage. It's very sunny in the studio, sorry for the glare. Um, so the Fimage process refers to collaging the um, items together in a way that is um, feminine. Um, so in terms of art history, that usually refers to uh, sewing because um, within the context of art history, when you're looking at um, ways of working with material um, in that lens, the female traditional way of working was always with a needle and thread. Hence my needle and thread tattoo, which you maybe have wondered about. Anyway, um, I'm going to be attaching the fabric pieces and I use a material that is called gesso. And um, gesso comes in um, a clear form or white or black. And the clear form is lesser known and it is the secret for me in the sauce. It's how I produce these lovely surfaces where you can see what the original surface was because the uh, gesso dries clear. So anyhow, that's what I will be doing on the next time lapse. I hope you are all having a beautiful morning. Hello my friends, it is finished. I just put the final brush strokes on this piece and all it needs to know is the signature and the clear coat, which is to come on Monday with my Damar varnish coming in the mail. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to show the piece in all of its lovely glory. Well, the light is perfect and you can see it fully. Oh, there's Maggie. Hi, Maggie. She's just fine outside. These lovely pieces were part of the heirlooms that were passed down from Grandma Maxine, whose kimono this was. Um, she acquired it while she lived in Japan. Um, that, was, that was in the uh, 1940s. Her daughter, my Aunt Sue, lived there with her. These are the words from Aunt Sue, who um, it's a story about her childhood and her time living in Japan and the fluency with which she spoke Japanese. Um, each of the flowers, as I have mentioned, is representative of one of the months, um, birth months of a family member. Um, and so they're all symbolic. And each of the pieces of fabric that has been included was gifted to me by um, family or by female friends. And... Yeah, it's done.